Hello everybody. Today, part two in the quarantine special here. It is March 15th of 2020. We're quarantined, going out of my mind a little bit. And I've got a it's part two in the interview process. And I've got a, a special friend here, Alberto, who has one of the most iconic, the most collectible of the vintage shoes, specifically Florsheim Imperial. Shell Cordovan 93605, new old stock condition, and we're going to chat about these shoes as well as a little bit of the human story behind them. Okay, so let's go. Hello, everybody. It's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of Shell Cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now, here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. So today, uh, Alberto Suastez, right? Uh, you are in, I believe, sunny Arizona. I'm here in Ohio. And I'm really excited today. This is the second uh, part of my quarantine series. And the reason that I'm really excited about today is, is you've got a really special pair of shoes to share with us. If you're into that vintage shoes, again, we're talking vintage floor shine shoes. Um, and maybe what I'll start with here is uh, just tell us if you wouldn't mind a little bit about you. And then, because there are going to be people, people here that we say a, a Florsheim Imperial 93605, they're going to say, ooh, I know what that is. And there are going to be other people that say, shell what? Um, you know, so if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about who you are, what you do during the day, and what you do after hours, and then maybe we can get into why this Florsheim Imperial 93605 is the holy grail of uh, a, a vintage American Florsheim shoes, if you wouldn't mind. Go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you, Bob. And I really appreciate the opportunity to share. Uh, my name is Alberto and uh, I work for a, for a Christian nonprofit and I recently transitioned uh, into this nonprofit uh, work from working in a bank for, for about 12 years. And so um, I just became passionate uh, about shoes in the last five or six years. Wow. And it has uh, kind of led me to uh, acquiring the 93605 uh, floor shimes in, uh, in Shell Cordovan. Great. Yeah. Great. Now, a lot of people out there know what Shell Cordovan is, and I'll uh, link a video below um, that, you know, explains a little bit more about Shell Cordovan, but would you mind telling people for the, you know, a, a new person who has no idea what Shell Cordovan, why, why is Shell Cordovan so special? Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, actually, when I, whenever I saw in different shoe forms, uh, people talking about Shell Cordovan, I swore to myself, ah, you know, that's too exotic. That's for a certain kind of people. I will never get a pair. And then um, I discovered, I found a, a really good deal on eBay for a pair of really beat up uh, uh, pair of shoes in Shell Cordovan and I bought them and I fell in love with the material. Um, it comes from the hindquarters of the of the horse, and yep. it's not the skin. It's actually a membrane from underneath the skin that kind of right. holds the muscles together. And um, it's very durable. Um, the, the grain is so tight that you can't see, like, the pores of the skin. Like, when you look at your arm or right. a, a good leather, you can't see it because it's so tight. Uh, and so you can have a, 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 a piece of shell cordovan um, last, you know, a long, long time because it's just so durable. It doesn't crease. Right. If you can show that, do you want to, you know, show the shoes we're talking about here? Absolutely. And can you, can you take the shoe tree out and flex it and, and show what we're talking about? Yeah. And I think the term, um, Phil Callis, my friend that runs uh, Ashland Leather Company, he says, uh, it doesn't break those micro creases he says it doesn't break if you can illustrate that i'm not sure if we'll see it on the video here yeah so as you can see this this pair has about uh, 10 wares now and i'm trying to catch it in the light and as you can see in the vamp area right here you don't see any creasing because as uh bob is saying um the break it just results in this type of roll and um, which can be actually reshaped or smoothed out uh, with uh, deer bone and other materials. But uh, hopefully this can come through. But um, and it's actually very hard to bend with just my arms. Right. But, um, but right. you can see 
And um, as a matter of fact, it is um, encouraged that you set the creases because those are obviously permanent, just like any, or, or the rolls per se, because the creasing is, is permanent. Mm -hmm. So you want them to be not to uh, create over here or over here. So you want right. to set the vamp to where, you know, the shoe doesn't look beat up and unattractive. And so that's where um, you're kind of told to set them up, set the creasing. Um, you know, there's a technique for it. And I can explain that if you want me to, but uh, mm -hmm. it's as simple as grabbing a pencil and um, lining it up with the ball of your foot to the outside mm -hmm. of, uh, of your pinky toe and just setting the, uh, just a straight piece of material, whatever it is, a ruler, and then bending your, uh, your foot to where the crease sets right there. And so it's neatly set in the vamp. In Very the cool. But maybe start with a big picture. Can you show the model of that shoe? There may be some people that saw the first video that didn't. Talk a little bit about what, what is a long wing brogue and you know what I mean? Kind of the, 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 the big picture with this iconic shoe outside of the material. Sure. Um, what I really like about it, and uh, I think you have it on one of the videos, is, uh, well, so it's called a full uh, long wing or full brogue because as you can see, there's the wings on the side, right? And I'm trying to do it slowly so that the camera captures it and then you can see the other side. So that's what we call a full brogue. And brogues are these little um, holes that are punched through the shoe, this design. And so, uh, and it's, and it's a, a blucher. A blucher is when these tabs are attached to the, uh, to the vamp per se. Um, and so it's different from an Oxford. And also uh, different from a derby. It's a type of derby. Right. It uh -huh. is. Uh, some people lump it together. Uh, most people that uh, know what they're talking about, they'll differentiate derby and, and, uh, and blucher. But um, so the appealing thing to me with these um, floor shine are the, um, the proportions. And again, uh, People have different tastes and they can come uh, to different conclusions than mine. But I've uh, owned uh, Allen Edmonds, uh, Long Wings, um, Alden, uh, Grant Stone, Carmina, many, many uh, shoemakers. And what I find appealing about these is again, the proportions, um, how steep the wingtip design is or how wide it is. Um, the narrowness of the uh, toe cap versus, you know, it being wider or narrower, uh, where the wingtip ends, um, uh, some of them come really short, some of them come uh, wider and uh, they have a wider wingtip. And so the design is different. Uh, but in combination with uh, everything, to me, this is the most appealing shoe. It is a five eyelet shoe uh, and so again uh, to me where they're set um, makes for a very very appealing shoe now you want to talk about the condition and uh, if, if you don't mind sharing the price and condition uh, the year of the shoe as well um, can you show us the logo on the inside and then you know like i said how and where you got those shoes because there's a story there too um, yes, so these, uh, to the best of my ability, and based on vcleat.com, uh, which is a website for everything vintage shoes, yep. uh, and it's an amazing resource. As you can see, uh, there's a code here, 643807. Uh, uh, I think that's the one that uh, we look at for the year. And um, so that's one, one, one clue that we have. have a two-digit letter code as well at the, yeah. on the right side? It's either CH or OH. I can't determine what okay, that so is. Okay, so that would be CH. So, uh, so if you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, okay, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that means that shoe was made in a year ending in the number seven. Now, can you show the, if you can show the logo? Yes. Okay. And I believe I also sent you pictures that you could probably see clear. Let me, let me share that. Absolutely. Sure. I'll put those up there on the screen. Um, let's, 
Okay, so here are the shoes. And there we go. This is what we're talking oh, yeah. about. Uh, and C okay. Oh, yeah. It's C. That has to be a ch because it should be two letters. Right. So right. the uh, a would be a year ending in zero. That's how you get that. It's the it's the number on the right. Nine three six zero five is the model number. Eight is the size. D is the width. And I think right. six four three eight zero seven is some batch number or something according to weekly. Yeah. Um, so what that means is that tells us it's a year ending in seven. And the logo, it's not 97 because the logo changed like in the 90s, I think, right? Right. So um, the other more important clue is the V-cleat placement. Oh, right. And so where you see the V-cleat um, on the bottom of the, of the heels, you will Word. see that it is not flush with the outside of the, of the heel. And that change happened actually in 1973. Uh, and they stopped making these in 1988. So these could not be anywhere past 88 uh, or before. Okay, right here. This is the V cleat. It's an actual metal cleat, right? Nails yeah. into the heels. This is a leather heel. And I yeah. didn't count. Have you ever counted how many nails are actually in there? It's like 57 or something? 51 uh, on the heel. And then there's uh, five closer to, um, to the middle of the shoe. Yeah, you can see those right there. I think there's another overall picture. Okay. Yeah. So what you're saying is this. V cleat is inset from the heel, correct? Right? Which makes it 73 and later. Is that what we said? Uh, either 77 or 87 because. Right, okay. So they started that inset V cleat in 73. So now you know the shoes is 77 or 87. So correct. the newest, at the very newest, newest, what does 87 make it? Like 33 years at the, at the newest? Yes. So that's an amazing. And if you can see the shoe here, this is obviously like absolutely unworn. This was what we call NOS condition, new old stock condition when you got it, right? Yes. I mean, the nails haven't even, like you see a lot of times those five nails will turn green. It hasn't even done that. Look at that. Yeah. That's astonishing. A little, little piece of history here, right? And look yeah, they're completely immaculate when I bought them. Mm -hmm. Look at the density. Um, uh, um, uh, if you're looking actually here at the, the stitching, like look how tight and close that stitching is. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Like they have this graining that they put on the sole itself is gorgeous. Yes. Like, wow. Yeah. Uh, do you mind sharing how much these set you back? <laughs> sure. Well, um, they were actually on eBay uh, listed for $500. I did not pay that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to uh, come up with, uh, with a, to an agreement with, with the seller. And so he asked that I would not disclose the price, obviously, because okay. he could sell. But um, I did not. It, it, they would easily go for $500 in this condition. Wow. Especially because when you go to Vcleat, um, to this um, website, you can see that the size 8D, uh, there weren't many produced. Uh, for example, there's three times as many in size 11 that were produced. So the fact that... Um, um, I got these in brand new condition. I knew that I was getting kind of my last chance at these. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No kidding. No kidding. Something else I just noticed you're looking at the picture is when you look at um, the detail, you know, just on how well they're stitched. I mean, a couple other things we can talk about here is right. you could see, um, you know, what you call here is, th th is that that's not fudged, is it? The wealth doesn't have fudging in it, does it? I'm trying to tell. No, um, they, they used a different process from what I understand, but all the stitches are, um, they line up with, with the wheeling, whatever they did. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. No, there's these grooves, mm -hmm. and each stitch falls into that groove. Right. Um, yeah, the classic. Is amazing. You can also see on the broguing, there's two perfectly aligned um, oh, wow. bubble stitches. Right. And it is, you're right. It's like perfect distance from the pinking. I mean, it's just yes. astonishing craftsmanship. I mean, the stitching is so neat all over this thing. This is a right. storm welt with that lip folded up. So this comes with what you'd call a double oak sole, right? Right. Okay. Now, if you look at yours, yours don't have those brown plain leather soles on the bottom of them anymore, right? No, not anymore. I... Um... I committed a crime in the world of shoe uh, making and um, I put very hefty sole protectors and heels because 
I do intend to wear them. Um, you know, I, I had a hard time wearing them for the first time, but then um, I almost fell a couple of times because of the leather heels. So I said, you know, I'm not wow. going gonna to risk it. And I work in a carpeted environment for the most part. So that it's like ice skating in that, in that sense. So I had these placed and they add a lot of height because there is um, a lot of uh, gravel and I'm always walking from place to place. I walk a lot. So I just said, you know what? I don't want to be worrying about what I'm stepping on. So wow. yeah. Um, so it added about two eighths of an inch to the double oak sole in height. So I, I know most, most people would probably be shaking their heads, but uh, I like, I really enjoy what you did with that. I like that approach, you know, because to me, that's a, it's a sturdy shoe with a storm welt on it, you know, I mean, and then you have that leather sole that's gorgeous the way you got it in the new old stock condition. But let's face it, how long is it going to look like that? Three, five wears, you know, and the pattern's gone anyway. So um, I like what you did there. You know, I had a, this may be a dumb comparison, okay, in some people's minds. One of my favorite vehicles I ever owned was a 1994 Capri station wagon, you know, in the bubble Right. You know, GM bubble wagons, LT1 engine, 260 horse from the factory, dual exhaust. I, you know, uh, put better mufflers on it. And I had these 275 millimeter, you know, 275, 60, you know, rally wheels with these big tires on it. And you can take that car anywhere. That's kind of what you have there. It's beautiful and functional. And I love, yeah, I really think that's an extremely functional and gorgeous shoe as well. It's almost like a crossover SUV of uh, shoes. Right. Me, you know, it's like LT1. a lower... <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, something like that. I was going to say lowered truck, but, you know, I, I like that. I appreciate that. So you don't mind sharing, okay? So the, obviously the shoes, we don't know exact price, but they weren't cheap, okay? The can-do attitude. Can you talk about that? Like how you, you know, came to, uh, you know, because you're not just going and blowing the money, you know what I mean, that you're earning on those shoes. Uh, absolutely. And, and thank you for asking the question because, yes, it may sound to a lot of people like a super extravagant um purchase and so um there there were a couple of factors um that i considered when uh, before even buying them so number one um i was in my corporate job again towards the end of my career transitioning into a nonprofit uh, type of job and by that time i had acquired um, a, a lot of different shoes um uh, throughout my my corporate career Mm -hmm. And so what I realized is that I did not wore, wear half of them. Wow. I just didn't find them that uh, beautiful. I just find a pair on eBay for $15, thought it was a, a good deal, and I would buy them and then not wear them. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing is I said, how can I um, sell the shoes I, I don't like and buy some that I would really, really cherish. So I posted a bunch of shoes on eBay and they were not selling. Uh, and so that got me into thinking, you know what? Well, they do need a little bit of work. So maybe I can work on them. And so that led into asking questions about how to refinish the uppers and make them more appealing and, and shining them better. And so that led me to a journey of um, uh, kind of refurbishing shoes. Ah. And that turned into a hobby. Now I do it as a side business. Uh, uh, kind of, I, I'm hesitant to say the word, but restoring the uppers, uh -huh. uh, uh, refinishing them, doing uh, dyed patinas, um, doing professional shines. So, so I've been doing this for three years now. No, and I, so, um, I find um, really good shoes on eBay. I refinish them, different colors, different patinas, resell them. Uh, for a little bit of a profit and so doing that um, i've actually so i got rid of 90 percent of all the shoes that i had and i started um selling mine for a profit and getting a little bit of uh, money back and buying the shoes that i really wanted um and so at the end of uh, about three years i had not spent a penny on any of the shoes that i currently own and i own nice. some fancy ones including these so um, I in, other words, in other words, you took all the profit from all your other jobs and turned that into the next pair and, correct. Know, and et cetera. Right. So it was a, um, a self-funding uh, kind of self-funded type of uh, venture. Now, you already told me that you have a family, you have other obligations, right? It's not like you're, you know, when do you do this? 
Um, so I have uh, three uh, boys under 10 years old. <laughs> and so once I put them to bed, uh, it, you know, I, I listen to a podcast or uh, some other thing. And that's when I do my work after nine o'clock. And nice. so I, you know, spend maybe an hour, an hour and a half um, over the week and, and I finish a couple pair of shoes, pairs of shoes and yeah. And if you don't mind, I know you said um, you don't make a killing on every, you know, pair of shoes you do a patina or whatever on, right? I mean, you've even probably, if you're like me, I'm sure you've lost money on some deals too, right? Yes. Um, so you get better with, with time, um, eyeing good deals, buying and then refinishing them and selling them for a good price. But uh, yeah, I have uh, lost money. As a matter of fact, I just lost money on a pair of shoes that I thought, uh, we're going to be profitable and, and they weren't right. and especially because of the time that we're in too. But right. um, yeah. And so it's, it is a little bit of a gamble. Uh, the patina jobs are more steady. So more people are getting to know my work and they send them to me from all over the country. Uh, I refinish them, refur refurbish them. Uh, and so uh, that gives me a little bit of income, which I use actually for uh, basketball tournaments and, and, you know, uh, the whole ordeal with the kids. Right. Oh, I love that. I love the fact that, like I said, you take, you know, even just a couple hours here, a couple hours there when most people might be goofing off or something. And, um, y you know, usually the how to questions are not how to questions with people. They're why to questions. You know, when you know the end goal that you have in mind and what you really want to achieve, and then you figure out, you know, ways to get it done. And I love that. I, I love that. Thank you. By the way, can you tell us, is that color eight? And can you explain color eight, color four burgundy? Sure. Um, so collar eight, uh, from what I understand, is a designation that Horween, the tannery that uh, makes uh, the, the Shell Cordovan, it's a designation that they have for this uh, purplish brown color. And so when different um, shoe makers um, purchase the raw material in collar eight, uh, or burgundy, they, they can add their own, um, um, I don't know, dye or, or finish to, to it, uh -huh. to give it a different color. And so with this one, this is, this is technically burgundy. Okay. But as you, the, the third shoe, right? From the left right. in this picture? Okay. And it's definitely burgundy there. But on the pictures that, that you were showing earlier, it looks brown. Right. And, and in different light, it looks, you know, totally different. So that looks brown uh, to me, um, or like purplish brown. Uh, whereas in the other picture with the comparison, um, it looks burgundy. So it's it really the right, is the far right shoe color eight then? It's almost like an eggplant color, right? Yeah, far right is color eight in Carmina. Um, and the far left is Alan Edmonds uh, chili. But okay. also the chukka, the second one from the left is is color eight. Is it color? Has, yes, over time, it has become much lighter. Oh, right, it's, it's a, the, the lightning, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you look at the first one, that chili, you can see the uh, the vamps look slightly, uh, not the vamps, the, the eye stays look slightly lighter than the vamp, and I think that's one of the other hallmarks of shell is you move around it and it like, almost like those flip-flop color cars that, not right. that drastic, but the, the color definitely changes with the angle and, you know, it's just a gorgeous material. It's hard sometimes, I think, in videos to really right. show you, you know, the depth, the true depth of this color of this material. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's um, a beautiful depth and sheen to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that logo as well. Oh, you know, even the way they do that gold imprinting on that logo, I think, of a, I think you have a better shot of it here at the end, the very end. Uh, I thought we did, um, maybe not, but you know, um, let's see if I can pull it up. Here we go. I'm not sure. Is, is the logo on there now? Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. Okay. So yeah, even that way, that gold stamp logo is just gorgeous. So, so this is something interesting to, to understand. NOS condition, $500 is a fair price for that shoe then, huh? Yeah. So if you were to buy uh, the same long wing blucher uh, style in a uh, different uh, shoemaker like Carmina, Alden, Alan Edmonds, um, um, Alan Edmonds, um, you would spend a minimum of $700. 
Right, yeah, is, is Allen Edmonds, is the shell quarter of in series 795 or 695 is the full? 795 Okay, but, but think about this for a second. That's, and they do go on sale or factory seconds. You could get a new Allen Edmonds at the right time for shell quarter of in for 500. Uh, yeah. not, not every day, but you can get them. So five to seven is the real cost for that shoe from Allen Edmonds. But to think that the new old stock from an individual buyer with no warranty in used condition, right? You don't right. really know for sure what you're getting pulls the same price as the brand new available version with a return and fitting and choice right. of any size. That's astounding. What makes that shoe, you know, what makes that shoe worth 500 bucks? Sure. So the easiest. Well, um, so number one, the material. The material is obviously very expensive, Shell Cordovan is. Uh, the history behind the shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, they are made in, in the United States. Uh, like I said, also the proportions that make it such a good looking shoe. Um, but also I would say that um, it, it's um, the, the history that um, this um, shoemaker has in the United States, the quality of craftsmanship that these shoes will not fall apart. Um, there are just so many, so many things I think, uh, one considers like in my case, um, I wanted a piece of American history. Ah, uh, uh, there we I go. Into. Um, so, uh, very briefly, I don't want to make this a, a sub story, but, uh, um, the reason why I got into, uh, shoes and was because when my dad passed away, he was 53 years old. I was 23 years old. Wow. I thought about uh, how much I would want to have a piece of uh, memorabilia, something personal, um, a personal item that he would have passed down to me uh, that I could have used like a wallet or um, a briefcase or a backpack or something like that. And so when I thought about that, I said, you know, I, I really wished that I had that. So I'm not going to make that mistake and I am going to buy things that will last mm. uh, and pass down to my children, whether they want to use them or not, that's up to them, but they can have the choice. And so I started collecting um, high-end uh, leather products and then I transitioned into shoes. Uh. And so uh, that's how I eventually landed into the vintage shoes because I saw that not only did I want something durable, I wanted a piece of of history. So what you just said there touched, uh, um, almost made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. So um, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. So I was at my mother's house, I think this was late last year on the holidays. Um, my father, um, my grandfather, I never met my grandfather. My grandfather passed away in 1964. We were going through a trunk of items and we found a letter from my father during the Korean War. One of the wow. points in the letter was he was happy that the new place he was living, uh, what do you call them, the barracks, had a floor. You know, and, like, and I'm complaining because Wi-Fi is too slow. You know, I'm like, man. And then we found stuff from my grandfather that I never met. And I don't know if you can see the logo. It says Hickok. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But he passed in 1964. And P for Powers. Again, I, I don't know if it's going to maybe cut in a picture. You know, it's probably not going to show up that well. But it's a pair of cufflinks. Yep, I see them. Mm -hmm. And these are absolutely my favorite cufflinks. Yeah, it says P on them, and that's kind of cool for powers. Uh, but, you know, whenever I wear these things, it gives me a connection to this absolutely. great man who survived World War I wow. you know, that I'd never met. You know, and, and like you said, these are, oh, just lost it. Uh, so whatever, 64, what is that? Uh, 40, 50, 60, what is 1964? So uh, uh 50 yeah. at least 54 years old yeah at a minimum well, almost 60 now yeah. yeah i mean and that's when he passed he could have bought them 20 years before that too right so yeah the quality items yes i love that do you ever see somebody else first of all a non-black shoe okay do you right. see somebody wearing a brown or even especially that that cordovan burgundy family of colors how often yep. do you ever run into somebody wearing a long wing blucher in a non-black color? Never. It's never yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And uh, most of the time, people will comment on my shoes uh, and un um, kind of understand that they may there may be something special about them, but they don't know anything about the shoes. Really? Yep. Just because of the sheen and the you know because they don't they don't have that plasticky look to them. It's a different. Right. Yeah. No, it's not patent leather type of sheen. It, it, you can tell that there's something special, like, again, the proportions, uh, something about them uh, makes people go, those are very nice shoes. My, my grandpa used to have <laughs> a pair like that. I get that comment all the time. Right, right. So I love this, you know, I mean, I, I, there's, there's a definitely, that's a timeless classic. It's not for everybody, you know, even without the additional soul you put on I me, mean, that's a, you know, it's a pretty massive soul. And I think one of the first things people say when they pick up one of those shoes is like, whoa, man, they're heavy. And, yes. you know, but um, uh, to me, they're very comfortable. I've got a pair of Allen and McNeil's same style shoe. Mm -hmm. What I've got is a poor man's version of what I really wanted, which is that, you know, I have the oxblood colored calfskin version I got for 245, you know, but. Yeah. But um, um, I, I don't believe a light shoe makes a comfortable shoe. You know, I love the sturdiness of the soles where you can walk over anything and, you know, and it doesn't bother your feet. So, Absolutely. And, and you know, the other thing is um, it makes you feel, feel good. There, it, it, there's, it's not arrogance. It's kind of this quiet confidence that you feel, feel good about uh, the shoes that you're wearing um, just with your outfit as well. Um, and so I just enjoy that. And, um, and my dad did teach me this uh, growing up. He, he, he would always say, I don't care how faded your clothes are or how um, uh, poor you are or how rich you are. Your shoes have always have to be immaculate because mm -hmm. people look at them. And so I learned that from my dad. And um, yep. yeah. Absolutely. 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 Really appreciate you being willing to share this stuff. Anything you want to say, a closing remark? No, I just, uh, well, yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Bob. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was beginning my journey of, you know, what type of shoe should I get that is quality, you know, a, a few years back, I was looking through YouTube for, for, for clues, you know, what brand, what uh, type of shoe should I get? Yeah. And I found your channel. And so you were, one of the first influences I had as to what was quality and what wasn't. So kind of being chatting with you is, is uh, a bit surreal. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. I just love hearing the feedback, you know, and like, I think that's what life is about, as you know, is trying to, how, how can I bring value to the other person, you know? So if I can do that, that's a good day. So well, you are. Wow. yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and, uh, you want to talk about, uh, I'll put it up on the screen here, your Instagram. Sure. Um, yeah. And so, as I mentioned, I do refinish shoes, um, mostly uppers. Um, I do some patina work, um, re-dye shoes. The patina work is amazing. It's oh, stunning. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. And so again, I, I hesitate to say restorations, but, uh, kind of refinishing uh, the shoes so, so they look better. And so uh, my Instagram is at Patina Works AZ. Um, and so check it out. If AZ you're, for your initials. Yeah. Uh, AZ for Arizona. Oh, for Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Oh, then it would be S. Your last name is S, not yeah. Z. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So Patina Works, P A T I N A W O R K S A Z. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I, I can read. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you for your time. Um, and thank you everybody here that's uh, watching. I hope you guys get some value out of this.